me like a hawk lately. I mean, she's got to make a comment on every mood I'm in. It's driving me crazy. Along with everything else I am trying to cope with. I know, I know. It's a very difficult time for you, but I'm sure... I could just if you tell Helen the truth and not lose him. But he's still jealous of Rick. No matter how hard he denies it, he never believed that nothing happened that night. All I wonder is why I didn't tell him earlier. If nothing really did happen. I'm afraid you're right about that. Oh, Jeff. Um, look, I just came from Rick's office and he's very anxious to see you. Could you make a point of getting in touch with him? Monica, I'll see him when I can, all right? But I'll guarantee it won't be this morning. Unless, of course, Big Brother wants to pull rank on me again and put me on a report. And if that's the way he's getting his pleasure these days, you tell him to go right ahead, all right? Uh, Rick, why don't, why don't I come to your office and explain it? Very little privacy down here. consider waiting until you graduated from law school and, and got a job as you originally planned. I don't know, Gail. It's, it, things happen sometimes and it, it changes things. Like uh, what things happen, for instance? Laura is, well, there, she's having some heavy problems right now and I think and she thinks that she would be much better off if she was out of that house. He wanting to get out of a house is no reason to get married. All right, Gail, listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. Her parents are really having some serious problems. And the tension is really getting to her. Sky, all, all married people have problems. Look, as much as I love your father and want to marry him, I mean, I'd be a fool to think that somewhere down the line, some problems wouldn't creep into our marriage, too. I know, I know that. I hope Laura does. And I hope you both realize something else before you get married. That there isn't a problem on earth that you can't solve if you truly love each other. Gail, let me ask you something. Sure. What do you mean? You don't have to say yes to this if you don't if you want to answer it, okay? Okay. Okay, now, do you remember when the epidemic was over? I asked you what time Rick left the hospital, and you said as soon as the quarantine was lifted, which was before midnight. That's right. What time did Monica leave? Scotty, I'm going to take you up on that option and not answer the question. Look, I'll be down in the cafeteria, and then I'll be in the clinic if, if you need me. that it was Monica who Dad spent the night with after the quarantine was lifted. Hi, Sky. Why? I don't know. I mean, uh, all of a sudden I was getting the feeling that you, you 
feel kind of uncomfortable with me. Am I right? Monica, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I'm really busy. Well, hey, uh, I'm sorry. Look, I, uh, I won't take up any more of your time. Look, if you're looking for chaos, you went down the cafeteria. Okay, well, I'll, I'll catch up to her later. Oh, uh, uh, Scotty, I, uh, I left a message for Laura to get in touch with me. I want to tell her personally just how thrilled I am of the way things turned out. Yeah, well, she won't be until later on. She's having class. She has her classes right now, and then she has a appointment with Dr. Kincaid over at Mercy. Are you going to pick her up? I'll tell her that you want to talk to her. Okay, good, good. Uh, I'd rather she got the message from you. I, you see, Bobby Spencer was on duty when I gave the original message, and I know how, how Laura feels about talking to her. Yeah, well, Bobby Spencer is not one of her favorite people right now. Yes, but the important thing is that you two survived in spite of what Bobby tried to do to break you up. Right. Scotty, are you sure that there isn't uh, something I've done? I mean, are you, are you upset with me? No, Monica, really, I'm not. Can I ask you a question? Well, would you like to sit down first, or do you want to ask me standing up? Have you ever thought? that I was, uh, completely paranoid. Where did a question like that come from? Well, I just talked to Scotty, and I... I just got the feeling that he couldn't wait for me to leave. Well, I, I know that today is kind of, uh, preoccupied and apprehensive, because he and Laura are, are going to see Rick and Leslie tonight and, and have that long awaited meeting. Gail, I happen to be an expert in apprehensive behavior these days. And that wasn't it. Scotty was acting like I was a disinterested stranger. Paranoid. Right? No, no, maybe not. Just just before I left the office, Scotty asked me what time Rick left the hospital at night after the quarantine was lifted. Go on. And he asked me what time you got the hospital. Oh, oh, why would he, why would he ask something like that? I'm really not sure. Except just before we got on that subject, he was telling me how difficult things were for Laura at home, since Leslie and Rick are having such serious marital problems. And Scotty thinks I'm responsible for it. Okay, I hope you didn't say it. What time Rick and I left? Well, fortunately, Scotty gave me an out by saying I didn't have to answer his question if I didn't want to, so naturally, I didn't. Laura must know something, or, or Scotty never would have asked you that. The only way I can find that out is to ask Laura point blank when I see her. Monica, if you do that, I think you'll arouse even more suspicion. Gail. Gail, everything that started over again in that quarantine is... is never gonna end. Never. Yeah, a little. Listen, I think I owe you an apology for blowing up at you earlier. Oh, I'm done. Yeah, well, maybe not, but I... I just wanted you to know that my bad mood had nothing to do with you. I had just gotten some pretty shocking news. Just wanted to get out of here. I'm sorry. Listen, I understand. I mean, if anyone knows what tension can do to the human psyche. But did you get in touch with Rick? No, I ha haven't had a chance yet. I've been, been in surgery all day. But I will. I don't know when, but I will. Please do. I know he's really concerned about you, Jeff. Yeah, I'm sure he is. You must have been devastated finding out about Heather through Gina. But you didn't know I was in the hospital. Why didn't you just call me and ask for an okay to Rick? Come on now, what can I tell you? I didn't think, okay? Well, doctors can't exactly do that, Jim. Our patients' lives come first. We don't have the uh, luxury of an emotional outburst. Hey, come on. I don't need you to recite the Hippocratic Oath to me, all right? I think somebody should remind you about it. Look, just ask me one question, okay? 
Have you ever found yourself in a position where your emotions just took over? Took control? No, not while I was on duty, no. Really? Well, tell me, how do you do it? What do you do, just wait until you walk out the front door of this place before you allow yourself the luxury of human feelings? Jeff, I haven't wanted to burden you with my problems lately, but yes, that is exactly what I try to do. Hang them up in the front door before I come into this hospital and pick them up again when I leave. Well, well, I just hope for your sake, Rick, that the day doesn't come when you find yourself really in a jam and you find out that you're not quite as controlled as you thought. You don't give up, do you? I mean, you're bound and determined to get into a real... Hey, look, look, Rick. I answered your page and I gave you my reasons for losing control of my emotions this morning. Now, will you please officially excuse me? No. That's only one thing I wanted to know. I would like to know why you acted so strangely before you found out about Heather. That is extremely personal. And I'm going to take my superior's advice and keep my personal problems outside the front door of this hospital so I don't choose to discuss them with you or anybody else. Thank you.